Hello everybody, get your coffee, brew a pot if you have not already. Some Tesla Powerwall and solar roof updates. If you have not seen the last video, the one year review, please check it out. We'll be here when you get back. Two years ago, our annual electric bill was $1,765. I have thought that it dropped down to $80, $85, but in reality, we got another month's bill and when that worked out and it unmuddied the data, our annual electric bill went down to $47. We paid an effective price of a third of a cent per kilowatt hour over the year. You'd think it couldn't get much better than that, right? Unless you start doing all these other ROI stuff. Well, there was a feature in the Tesla app that I did not have access to. I figured it was geo-locked only available to certain regions, certain utility customers, etc. Or maybe it was because we had Powerwall 2s and not Powerwall Pluses or something like that. Well, turns out I had misinterpreted our net metering agreement, which had some vague verbiage and made me think that we were not allowed to dischar discharge our solar and batteries into the grid. I was incorrect. And around March of last year, Tesla started rolling out this feature in the advanced options menu of their app called Export Everything. And you could toggle between Export Everything and Export Solar. The implications of this are that now we can charge from the solar until it's worth three times more money, that electricity, and discharge it into the grid, even at night. There are some intelligent features around this. It uses time of use settings and uh, what they call cost savings mode in the app where you put in all of your costs and all the times of day. Previously, that setting and the batteries, and by that setting, I mean cost savings, it would make it so that we would use grid electricity when it was off peak then once it became peak time, we would use the battery and we would use nothing from the grid. Now, when it becomes five o'clock, the power walls start dumping 15 kilowatts onto the grid. The other setting that was added was um, import to the batteries, charge from the grid. That has tax implications and they warn you when you open it to consult your tax professional. If you have both of those settings on, you can charge your batteries with seven cent electricity and then sell it later for 23 cents or 22 cents to make on weekdays throughout the whole year, maybe another thousand dollars, something crazy. And this is a game changer. I think that in the winter, it can almost zero out our electric bill. I mean, in the summer, we're already exporting a ton of electricity, even during peak times when the sun is kind of still up in the summer rate times. So it's going to be huge. If you don't have this setting and you do have power walls, message support and ask if you can get it because I'm really excited to see what it'll do. Um, no matter what way you cut it or whatever way you want to interpret return on investment, this feature could cut it in half while also doing a lot to support the grid. Okay, I got another cup of coffee here, and I'm going to get into three other little questions as the lawnmowers come out. Fantastic. First thing, I've seen several times people ask about if the solar shingles have an embedded heat device to melt the snow. And no, they don't. That wouldn't make sense. Uh, it turns out the days with snow have snow because there's not a lot of solar energy to be had. So you are chasing the last and lowest diminishing returns. It will not be worth the energy nor the complications of engineering to add heating to the shingles so that you could collect solar on those worst days. The other thing is that the shingles are slippery and they have avalanches around the house as it uh, snows and then warms up. You get procedural avalanches, if you will, and it's very satisfying, uh, and then you hardly get any energy after that on those days. Next, 
I've been asked several times whether or not we're driving the LEAF for free now. And I would say it's complicated. Sometimes it is charged with only excess solar, but the methodology for pricing running appliances that I like to do is I take the total that we spent on electricity over the past year, that $47, and I divide it by the total kilowatt hours used, not our net kilowatt hours. With that, I got that one third of a cent per kilowatt hour figure. I tallied up all that we drove and all that we charged the LEAF in the past two years. And for the last 12 months, we have charged the LEAF 654 kilowatt hours, uh, usually about 15 kilowatt hours. So when you do that, uh, the average person spends about 12 cents per kilowatt hour in America that would have cost $78 for the entire year with solar and batteries it was a dollar 96 that we spent on charging the leaf all year long I also have to say real quick we use electric scooters and I really want to make a video at some point about electric scooters not just for the fun and the uh, socio-political elements of scooting, but also uh, they're great, they're cheap, and they're easy, and I think they're good for the environment if you don't dump them in a river. Anyway, last question that I often get is about cleaning the shingles, and uh, no, it's not really worth it. I'm going to defer to other people who have cleaned their solar panels and looked into it. Um, if you want them to stay you know, looking all shimmery and new, then yeah, by all means go for it. But I, it doesn't really increase the efficiency enough to justify the water used to clean them and definitely not paying someone to clean them if you aren't one to clean them yourself. Now, if you let them accumulate dust and dirt for years and years, then maybe, but uh, I can't didn't advocate for getting the Tesla solar roof because we wanted a higher maintenance roof, right? So to each their own, we're not, we're not going to clean it. As far as that goes though, guys, I appreciate your questions and uh, your, your nice comments. Um, there will be more of these videos to come. Uh, I just want to tackle them when they come up. You know what I mean? So until next time, thank you very much.